The Health Protection Agency is urging young people across the region to ensure they're protected against mumps after a dramatic increase in cases. New figures show there were 467 cases, that's treble the number, in the whole of last year. The HBA says that people aged between 15 and 24 account for over 70% of all cases of mumps. That's because many of them missed out on being vaccinated at an early age. Well, it's great to have you with us this Monday evening. Up next, all Some more news now from closer to home. Hundreds of bus passengers in Essex faced disruption to their journeys today after the first in a series of 24-hour strikes got underway. The company says it's disappointed with the action and is unable to offer its workers a pay rise in the current economic climate. Alba Patel has this report. Over the summer, people in Essex have had to deal with a rail strike. More recently, an ongoing postal strike is still causing disruption. And today, more industrial action, this time due to striking bus drivers. I think it works both ways, really. Um, they've got family and kids to feed, you know, but at the same time, it has effect on, um, effects on other people as well trying to get to work. I think they're lucky to have a job these days. Angered by a pay freeze, drivers say they've had enough and will stage at least another three 24-hour stoppages. Over the last sort of 12 months, affairs have gone up and that. And to be told that it's 0% pay rise for all their driving staff, um, it, 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 we just feel is unreasonable. The few buses running today have been driven by workers drafted in from Norfolk. And travel has been free on most services to try and compensate for the disruption. But the company says it's disappointed by the industrial action. Revenues are down. People are thinking about the trips they make and the ones they don't need to make they're not making that's impacting us so that's the reason why we are freezing the pay i do understand that it's frustrating for our drivers because uh, all of us are actually feeling the pinch now and um, it's going to continue for a while longer at this stage it looks unlikely this row will be resolved anytime soon leading to the likelihood that scenes like this will be repeated again soon Alpa Battelle, Anglia News. A man's been arrested in connection with a hit and run in Suffolk, which has left a man critically injured. 42-year-old Chris Corder was hit by a car in Benton Street in Hadley last month whilst delivering parish newsletters. He's still seriously ill in hospital. Suffolk police say a 42-year-old man from London has been arrested on suspicion of dangerous driving, failing to stop and perverting the course of justice. A Dame Le Car has also been seized. It's emerged that only two people took advantage of a free taxi service home on Saturday night for drinkers in the Norfolk town of Watton. The police scheme is designed to run like a bus service with prepaid taxis, dropping people off at various locations. It's hoped it'll cut late night crime. Norfolk police say the three month pilot scheme will continue. Now, what may be the most sought after guard dog in the world has been born in Suffolk. Darren Debenham, who owns a security firm in Ipswich, claims the dog could be the first of its kind. The pup has already doubled in size since she was born last Sunday. Serena Sandy went to meet her. Fitting snugly into the palms of her owner's hands, this little puppy may look like any other, but it's thought she could be the first of her kind. The mum is a Belgian Malinois. The dad is a Siberian Husky. Um, so what we've named the actual pup now is a Huskanois. So we've crossed obviously both the names to, see, to obviously get the first name for this. This crossbreed has attracted interest from around the world, with people from America and Canada expected to visit in the next few weeks. Well, she might look cute and fluffy now, but when she's fully grown, it's hoped she'll become one of the world's best guard dogs. She's certainly got good genes. Huskies have good agility and stamina. Their muscular legs mean they're good runners. Malinois are used by the police and military as they're very athletic and good at fighting off intruders, as this demonstration shows. Good girl. This little pup won't be expected to do anything quite so daring just yet, but her training will begin next year. Until then, there's plenty of time to get in a bit of kip and dream about growing big and strong. Serena Sandu, Anglia News, Woolpit in Suffolk.
Extremely strong. Right, so on to football now. And there were no championship matches at the weekend due to international fixtures. But our lower league teams did have games. Matthew Whiting rounds up the action. One and a half thousand Loyal Canaries fans made the 600-mile round trip to Carlisle. Also there, reserve keeper Michael Theoclitus, forgiven after he failed to show for a Johnston's Paint Trophy match in midweek. One thing that didn't make the trip north were the players' shin pads. City, who don't have a kit man, left them in Norwich. After a scramble to gather new ones, the Canaries made a slow start. Early Carlisle pressure led to Ian Hart going close from a free kick. But it was Norwich who took the lead just before half-time. Wes Houlihan started the move by winning the ball in midfield. And after input from Russell, Drury and Martin, Houlihan made up the ground to slot home the winner. His celebration reflecting the mini-drama before kick-off. City had the better of the second half, but it took a fine save by Fraser Forster to ensure all three points and make the long journey home a happy one. Colchester earned a valuable win at Leighton Orient, where former U's boss Geraint Williams is now in charge. Williams saw his keeper stretched off after an early goalmouth scramble before Coyote Odijayi scored the only goal of the game to take the U's up to third in League One. Despite their opponents being bottom of the table, Southend fans knew the visit of Southampton wasn't going to be easy. And the Saints got off to the perfect start at Roots Hall, Neil Trotman standing home after just six minutes. A fine double save from Steve Mildenhall kept the Shrimpers in it. Then a superb free kick by George Friend levelled the scores. His placement, perfection. But they weren't level for long. First, Adam Lalana deflected home a Morgan Schneiderling shot. Then he broke through and finished with style to guarantee Saints the points. Matthew Whiting, Anglia News. An appeal's been launched to raise £100,000 to create a sculpture of one of Ipswich's most famous sons. The artwork in honour of Cardinal Wolsey would be placed in either St Peter's Street, where he lived as a boy, or near to his college gate. Despite being one of the most powerful men in Tudor England, there is no official monument to him in his hometown currently. A shortlist of five artists has been drawn up to make the statue.